and back. I'm just going to go from start to finish and getting FreeBSD set up. Um, you had your turn, NetBSD, although it was an older version. So to do that, you would go to FreeBSD.org and there's a GetBSD. And it seems a little bit confusing. They have, why do they have 7.3 and 8 here? Release, and then they got if you know a little bit more about BSD, then you uh, might know that there is a, something called a release version and a current version and a I forgot the, the other stable, I think, um, version. And um, you, you're interested in the release version. This is the one they're officially releasing for everybody's use. And then uh, you click on ISO here under 386. Of course, if you're not using an I386, you probably know what that is. <laughs> and then basically you um, have to download. You click on this file. You can see it's purple here. You click on it. And it should ask me. Yeah, okay. So what you do is you save it. And then you have to unzip that. And then what you get is a DVD image. And then you um, have to burn yourself a DVD. And then the end result will be something relatively unsophisticated looking <laughs> that I'm going to pull out of my giant <coughs> packet O CDs and DVDs and I've either tried or bought I've been doing this for a while okay there, there is FreeBSD before release I couldn't install it on this computer because FreeBSD at least wants to have a primary partition to work on. Okay, so I'm just going to power this guy up. Stick the old DVD in. That's a DVD, yeah, it is. Get myself power on my monitor. Let's see how the FreeBSD installs. This is the latest one, at least as of now. It's this August, towards the end of August of uh, 2010. And my old and outdated, um, in the past days, deluxe monitor is now <laughs> taking a little bit of time to load up. And I want to get my keyboard situated. Could actually place it on my lap. And now this it's not clear what you need to do here, but what you want to do is you want to boot FreeBSD. And you're booting FreeBSD off this disk. And probably in develop in this the, de the circles of developers that are <laughs> working on FreeBSD, they, they know or they at least think this is a live CD, and so that makes sense to them, but it doesn't really make sense to most people, but it goes straight into the installer, and then what country in the United States, and I want to do a standard, and it's going to take me into this DOS style F-disk utility, because I, now I'm going to untwist this, like the in over 10 of chef, okay, and then we get, say okay, now it's going to say what do I want to do, and the, the BSD is a little bit different, both BSDs are a little bit different in the way they label their disks. Okay, so AD0, okay, is your hard disk, and slice 1 is was my X Windows partition, slice 2 was my swap partition, and slice 3 was my Linux partition that I had already. Now, I don't want to use the entire disk, and the reason why I don't <coughs> is because... I think I might want to put uh, NetBSD on the other one. And so I think, since it's going to be a little easier to work with FreeBSD, that I'm going to delete the Linux swap and the Linux extended uh, ext2 file system. Okay, so I'm going to do delete partition. Now I'm going to do delete partition. So now I've got one unified area of unused space. 
now I'm going to create a slice. They call them slices instead of partitions, and they're not going to change that anytime soon. Specify the new size. Hopefully it knows um, that I want to use the rest. And it does say up here, ST under size, 3 and a half, same thing. Uh, type file system to create a native FreeBSD slice. Array 6 for DOS fat. Uh, note, if you choose a not, it will not be formatted or otherwise prepared. It simply reserve space for you to use another tool. Come on. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Now, why the f why did it not use the rest? I mean, what what is used? There's 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 about nine megabytes unused. Why? <laughs> did did I not? Oh, okay, let's do this again. I'm going to delete this. And I want to um, nine three nine zero oh, nine five two eight zero. Oh. So I want to let's see what happens. Create the slice. Same numbers. Okay, so I guess something about the FreeBSD file system it just can't use those nine megabytes. I, I don't care. So I've created the slice, and I think. Q means finish. Um, hmm. Install a standard master boot record. Install the FreeBSD boot manager. I think I'll do that. You, now you need to create B, BSD purchase. Didn't I not just do that? What? Okay, that's what I wanted. I want a file system. And I want my mount point to be the root of the file system. And that's it. And I don't want to do other slices. I'm not going to do other slices. So why the heck would I cut that? I think it already, I think it was, yeah, that was a weird sizing at three. They're probably asking for blocks. Um, let's see. Q equals finish. Um, okay, so I am a user. What the hell? Come back here. Okay, he has selected user. And I want English documentation, which is recommended. My keyboard's got some kind of issue with it. Something's stuck in there. <laughs> I'm going to have to get out. Okay, so I've done that. Say okay. And yes, I do want the ports collection. That's the same thing as package source. And I say OK. I'm going to install for my CD. Are you sure you want to? Yes, I want to continue. And no swap devices. You should create at least one. Without swap, you're still. Yeah. I have about. I have at least a gig of RAM in there. It's going to create a new file system. Starting an emergency holographic shell. I didn't know this was an emergency. And now it's going to extract files into the base directory. <coughs> now I was wondering uh, to get a solution uh, on my newer computer here if I'd be able to uh, do my own extraction of the FreeBSD files onto a DOS partition. But I remember looking that up and at least coming to the conclusion based on the research I did and other people's posts that FreeBSD won't boot or operate on top of the DOS partition. Uh, and, and, and if I think about it, I think those the FAT file system doesn't really have the ability to store permissions within it. You know, does does the you know, who owns the file? And then uh, if if someone is in the same group as the owner, can they read or write? Can they execute? 
Could someone else that's not the owner or not in the owner's group, can they rewrite or execute? <clears throat> Those are the permissions. Okay, so adding packages. This is a Pentium 4 FreeBSD. It tends to be a light kind of system. So I don't think I'm going to... Um, you know what? Back at system stall, I'm probably going to have to go back in there because I think there were... I remember there being more options, and one of those options being was to install KDE 3. And just a regular user, I don't know if they consider to be a regular user. A regular user to me means you're using KDE 3, but obviously <coughs> isn't necessarily, you know, the what I want. So now we've got package add. This is as graphical user interface-ish. Interface as this gets. I'll stop now because I'm getting pretty late. Uh, hopefully I can load this up and then I'll um, be back.